Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to yet another masterclass. It's nice to see all your smiling faces this morning. Easily the most requested subject over the weekend was bow arm, bow holds, bow changes, everything regarding right hand, and that's exactly what we're going to try to tackle today and in the following days because this subject is so vast and so big that I don't want to cram it all in one masterclass. But I thought today I would take you through all the different warm-up exercises that I do in order to increase the strength of the hand and also to increase awareness of the different parts of the arm, the hand and the fingers. And the first thing that I find super important is that before we do a warm-up with a bow is that we warm up the whole body. I've already did a couple of sun salutations this morning. Uh, you can also go for a run or do any kind of warm-up exercise. Don't go to the instrument when your body is not warmed up and try to warm up at the instrument. And don't just warm up with coffee. I also like to do some stretching exercises. Uh, let me know in the comments below if there is anything in particular that you would like to know about. Take up your bow. Before we start, let's place the bow in the bow hand. For that, you take the bow into your left hand and hold it at the nut. And you just let your hand fall naturally and don't do anything special here with the right hand. If you actually just fit the bow as it comes, put the thumb, flip it over, there's your bow hold. Let's talk about the purpose of the fingers. Now clearly the purpose for the first finger is to take all the energy that is coming from the arm and through pronation put onto the bow and subsequently onto the string. So you need to find a position where the first finger um, lays comfortably on the bow and can actually do its job. If you curl the finger in any unnatural way or curl it around the bow, you can't really put the maximum energy on the bow as you would like. So make sure that you always remind yourself what is the purpose of this finger. The purpose is to transmit the energy and to transmit the pronation. My middle finger comes onto that little metal thingy here. Um, my ring finger comes in the vicinity of the eye and what I love to do with the with the ring finger is just to always feel how much contact do I have um, on the frog here. Gives me a really good feeling of security because that is actually the finger that has the most contact with the bow. So I want to make sure that this is always a guiding finger. Pinky is really important in order to steer the bow over the string. I sometimes catch myself doing this, tea time with a queen. Some, some people have a bow hold uh, like, like violinists do with, with a pinky on top. Uh, I have nothing against that. If that works for you, that's great. But I personally like to have the contact here. As a teenager for years, I used to lock this joint of the thumb and subsequently all my fingers went up uh, like this. For your fingers to be flexible, your thumb absolutely needs to be flexible. I have this nice piece of, of rubber here. A lot of people ask me where I get it. It's actually from Medicinal Supply. Uh, it's a very simple rubber tube that then I fold over here once just to enhance my, my bow hold. So now that we have located all the fingers on the bow, let's try to check the flexibility. So with your left hand, you push the bow back and forth and you just let your fingers of the right hand react. Now we want to turn the passive motion of the right hand into an active motion. So we're gonna remove the left hand, do the work by itself. You can already feel that this is quite a hard exercise for this muscle here, as the pinky really has to make sure that it holds the bow while it also moves. And we want to send the pinky to the gym. So what I want you to do is to turn the bow around and you grab the bow at the tip and you do push-ups with a pinky. And the, these middle fingers, they, they are loose. And now, oh, I do push-ups. And this is awesome. This is a really good exercise. You're gonna feel how it's gonna train this muscle. Again, if you feel a little bit of fatigue, that's okay. But as soon as it hurts, was as soon as you feel a sting or something going up your arm, you stop, okay? So don't injure yourself. Just train that muscle one push-up at a time. Good. 
Now, when you come back to your bow hold, you actually have increased, first of all, the strength of the pinky and of its muscle, but you've also increased awareness of the finger. So now when I do push-ups here or when I hold the bow, actually I feel the finger and I feel the contact much better. And this is what a lot of these exercises are about. They are about um, you increasing the awareness of the fingers and not just having a fixed bow hold and going statically, but actually being aware, ah, I can modulate the motion with a finger. One of my personal favorites, the spider. You want to make sure that you move one finger at a time. Don't hurry and for sure have your arm or pillow below so you don't drop the bow. When we come to the tip, let's do five push-ups just for fun. And we're going back. Yeah. And take your time. I've been doing this for quite some time and it goes quickly, but I also don't want to go too quick in order to really feel each individual finger working. This is not about speed, but this is about accuracy. Now, just for fun, we're gonna flip over the bow and we're gonna do it this way. And what you're gonna feel is a wonderful increase in weight for the pinky also for the other fingers and it feels very strange but it's great exercise we'll also do five push-ups here one two three four five now let's strengthen the bow hold make sure that you have a secure grip which is relaxed but still firm and we're gonna go nine o'clock twelve o'clock three o'clock dang 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 and again, you feel how necessary it is to have a good grip with your pinky. If you don't have that, the bow just falls over. Okay, if you've done a couple of these, you wanna make sure that you loosen the hand again and that you don't get stiff here, but you actually always come back to that sensation of strong and movable, flexible fingers. Now let's warm up the wrist and roll the bow like this, exactly. You can actually also roll it the other way. You can also include this in your warm up without the bow. Just turn your wrist and turn it the other way. If I move my wrist in the morning, I remember that I have one attached to my bow arm. <laughs> it's always good to remember that and that this is not just a stiff connection but that this is later on going to be part of our movement. What I do see a lot is that people move only from the shoulders so that they have a relatively stiff arm. So just as a reminder, try to move uh, the elbow joint and just really uh, actively stretch it out and remind yourself, ah, I have that joint. Fantastic. I'm going to use that the whole practice day. Yeah? So that we're, we're not going to go into this movement but actually we do enjoy a stretch. All right, let's add the cello into the mix. I am going to repeat some of the exercises that we've just done, but now on the string. So um, that movement that we did before, the back and forth mo uh, motion, we're gonna now do on the string. We're gonna put some weight on the string and I really want you to have contact. So if you wiggle the string a little bit, I want you to have good contact and then we're going to explode in this motion. We're going to do the same thing with a down bow. So our fingers are low and they have good contact. My wrist is supple. It's not fixed, eh? but it actually it can move. But we have good contact here and I get, get these little crackly noises. That really means that I'm attached to the string and I'm exploding just with the finger motion. Next thing, let's activate the wrist. And I like to do that with string crossing. So we're gonna use an up bow on the G string. And we're just gonna move with the wrist 
to the D string. It doesn't have to be a huge motion, yeah? It's just enough to cross the string and it's just as much as is necessary. And now let's include the fingers in the motion and maybe we can go from G to A string. Now let's activate the lower part of the arm. Try to keep this upper arm relatively steady and we're just going to use the elbow joint. That actually feels really good, I have to say. This is um, a joint that I don't use enough. I think it's always good to remind ourselves in the morning that we have it and let's use it. Let's use the whole apparatus um, just with some open strings. A great way to train the bow change to fix the bow with the left hand and just move the arm back and forth and pull from the elbow and just let the other joints passively give in. When I let go of the left hand, it's actually a very, very, very good feeling. Remember how we did the bow crawl with the bow facing the other way? Well, we're gonna use that exercise also now on the string. So crawl towards the tip and really make sure that you have a good strong bow hold here. And let's do a couple of bows. And really try to keep the flexibility that you also have when you touch the bow at the frog. That way you will really increase the strength, the flexibility, and also just the ability to feel your fingers at all time, you will increase that immensely. So this is a fantastic exercise. I'm actually just using a little bit of motion to cover that bow change more elegantly. All right, everybody, that's it for today. That was a lot of fun. My bow arm feels amazing. I feel really warmed up and ready for a good day of practice. Let me know in the comments below what the next thing should be regarding uh, the bow arm, if it's a fast bow stroke or if it's about legato, anything you want. Uh, I'm really curious to see where your interests are at the moment. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you in the next class.